I've just had an exciting package delivered from DHL. And it is from, oh look at that, Espressive. And it says ESP32 S2 Solar, I'm not sure how to pronounce their development board. And a Kaluga development kit. And maybe something else. Let's uh, open it up and have a look inside, shall we? So, what have we got inside here? Dun dun dun! Well, before we open these kits, guess what this is, folks? This is too little ESP32 S2 final silicon. Two samples from their production run. Let's get in closer. Not really a lot to see on the camera right now, but these are final silicon of the ESP32 S2. These will be going on my new Pro S2 prototypes that are currently being produced at JLCPCB right now. They just have to go through electrical testing and then they will be shipped to me. With the delays with DHL and everything, it's still probably going to be about a week away, unfortunately, before I have those boards. So I will not be able to assemble these until then, but at least I have them. Just two of them, which is better than zero. Absolutely better than zero. So they're final silicon. Yes! In the meantime, I've got these two development boards. Okay, this is the first one. So this is the final version of their development kit example prototype board. Look at that, how the uh, antenna sticks off the end. It's a bit crazy. Look at that. They stuck a very large 50-50 RGB LED on it. Get a bit closer again, shall we? So that is the board and it has the S2 inside. So what does that say on there? It's an ESP32 S2 Rover. Excellent. And it also still has a CP2104 on it. So they have deliberately kept the separate USB on their development boards. For those that want to be able to use USB to talk to the S2 and use the on-the-go on the S2 for other peripherals. Obviously, you can't use it for both at the same time. And that is pretty cool. That looks quite nice. Now let's look at what's inside here. Whoa. So much zooming in and out. Sorry, folks. Okay, what have we got? We have got a camera module. So it's SP32 S2 HMI camera version 1.0. We've got their touch panel, which could have used a little bit of uh, flux cleaning, but that's okay. So this is all capacitive touch, volume up, volume down, network, play, pause, photo, record, with a cable to connect. And then here is the piece de resistance. I can't even say that. Here's the board. So this is the, what that is be? 32 S2 Leopard. I wonder what Leopard is. Sample not for resale. So this is quite interesting. So it has one of their rovers inside here, the S2 Rover. Um, I don't really want to pull this apart, but that's not screwed on there, is it? So maybe I can get the top off. Beautiful screen in black PCB. And it's got to be a, a 3.2 inch screen, I think. Does it say on the back? This is their Lyra P LCD 32 V1.0 screen. 10th of the 1st, 2020. Put all the little dip switches on the back. That's really cool. Okay. And then they've got their Lyra T board. So it's got an audio jack and it's got a speaker output. That's a really nice flat big electrolytic cap. Got connect to external mic matrix. Oh, it's got a microphone on it too. Is that mic or matrix? Not sure. And then the camera goes into here, I believe. So you can walk around with the camera connected. And a whole bunch of buttons. Oh, there's a little microphone here, little MEMS mic. Okay, pretty cool. I will pull this off and we'll have a look at what's underneath. All oh, right, now here's the touch connector here. Right, that's for the, a microphone matrix, right, for an array. And this one down here, which you'll see in a moment, is for the touch panel, I believe. I've not seen one of these before. 
I only found out I was getting one of these at the last minute. And very exciting if I can get this off gently. Okay. It is stamped sample not for sale. Look at that. So, I don't know what this is. Oh, it's an FTDI chip. Okay, interesting. So they're still doing separate USB with this. So they've got two USBs. I don't know if one's for JTAG and one is for programming or whether one is for programming and one is for on the go. I'm going to have to do quite a bit of research into this. I love how they've got these dip switches everywhere. These are really nice looking dip switches. Surface mount. Okay, so it's a 3.2 inch LCD. That's the FPC connector. So obviously you can use the FPC or you can use this, what looks like a parallel interface for it, which I guess should make it really fast. And there's a nice squared c FPC connector here as well. It looks like they're using a uh, buck converter power setup over here. There could be a uh, charge PMIC controller over here, maybe for the battery. It's an off switch. Don't know what that jumper there is. Lots of transistors everywhere. Very nice looking board. Interestingly, they've left the uh, 4.3 inch LCD connector off. I wonder what size that is. It does look quite large, but I think it might just be a 3.2. So I should really plug this in and power it up and see what it does. So I need to put it all back together first. And as I said, I don't know anything about this other than it is a massively full-featured experimentation board, I think we can call it. It's quite interesting how all this comes together. It's not, these aren't screwed in from the bottom. They just sit like that. But I guess that's fine once it's all together, once they can't move. But it looks like an experimenter's dream, this. Okay, that, 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 that. I'm hoping there's some firmware on here already. I'm making an assumption that there is some firmware on here. Why does that not line up now with the holes? Did I miss? Oh, I missed. Okay, it's on the wrong one. Try that again. So this is a, a two-sided header here, but only a single-sided, or one row over here. So I just put it in the wrong slot, that's all. It's quite cool that it's keyed by doing it like this. I'm assuming I can plug the camera in, and I should probably just do that to see if it does anything when I turn it on. And maybe I should also connect the touch as well, although I probably should have um, done this when it was off, so I can get my hands in easily to open the connector. See if I can slide it in. Remember, I'm doing this under the camera, so I'm actually quite far away from what I'm doing right now. Come on, straighten up. What I didn't look at is, okay, one's USB and one's power. So let's get some power. Okay, I just forgot that I don't have power with my usual power connectors over here when my computer's not plugged in because they come off the Thunderbolt 3 connection. So that wouldn't have worked, so I just plugged a wall wart in. Let's have a look. So, plug it in on the side. Um, oh, we've got a green LED on, but nothing else. Nothing else. So maybe, so let's flick this switch. Oh, we have power light, but nothing on the screen. Oh, we have a power light here. So interesting, the green light comes on whether the on and off switch is on or off. Maybe that's just showing that it's charged, that maybe that is the a PMIC there. It's showing that there's a charge. Capability for the battery. So why is that not working? Um no picture. What do we have? reset? Oh! Oh! Holy moly! Look at that! Hey everyone! Woo! Hi, I'm Sion, the unexpected maker, making a fool of himself. Okay, that's really cool. So that's coming through the camera. I wonder if it realizes which way it is. I wonder if I turn it around. Oh, look at that, it does. So it's got a, it doesn't understand that way, but it does flip this way. So it's got an IMU or something on board. That's pretty cool. Sorry, <laughs> I'm just really enjoying this. Okay, nice. Nice screen, I'm not gonna take the plastic off. I mean, all this stuff here is just from the plastic. That's pretty fast. Wow, that's really fast. That's because it's all parallel, obviously. Parallel camera, parallel s display. I wonder how many frames per second that's running at. That's nice. Okay, um, does the... So we've got buttons down here. 
that also is the like the same as what's on the touch. So volume up, volume down doesn't do anything. Mode. Mode's not doing anything. Record, no, okay. What about these? Just try the touch screen. Play, pause, no, photo. They're not doing anything either. I wonder if maybe this sketch just doesn't do anything with this. Maybe there are different sketches. Set, play, okay. They're not doing anything. Um, interesting, the mode. Nope. Bummer, okay, well, the camera works and is really fast. Faster than anything I've ever experienced on an ESP32. So that is pretty crazy. That's exciting. Sorry, you can see my that's camera in camera inception. It's my DSLR that I recorded with and that is the microphone that I always mention that I'm going to hit my head on, bang, when I'm recording. Maybe I should do a whole video or live stream using this. How cool would that be? Anyway, or oh, office view no, let's not do that. That'd be a bad idea. How cool is that? Beautiful. Um, so it's using FTDI, and I don't have any FTDI drivers on my Mac anymore, because when I upgraded to Catalina, I had to remove them, and I haven't looked at any new ones, because I don't have any boards that use it. So I'm going to have to find some drivers that I can install so I can talk to this. But this is pretty incredible. Very exciting. So there you go, folks. So this is the Caligula, Caluga, I don't know, however I can think Caligula. Isn't that from the uh, Roman Empire? I don't know. Anyway, that's pretty cool. I'm a bit worried I'm going to rip the camera out by accident, maybe. So what a great haul from Espressive. Thank you so much for sending this. I'm going to enjoy playing with this once I get my dev environment set up. So it's great that I've got all this S2 stuff, but I can't really do a lot with it right now. There's no support for any of the S2 really other than the IDF and the IDF right now is it's it's not even beta it's pre-beta so the IDF support for the S2 is pre-beta there's no Arduino on the horizon at all right now I mean there will be but there's no Arduino at all there's obviously no MicroPython at all right now I'm aiming to change that but it's going to take some time and obviously there's no circuit python yet because i don't know if anyone else adafruit wave got silicon and they've now shut down for the next few weeks anyway so there's no need to rush out everyone and try to find s2 chips and boards because there's not much you can do with them right now unless you want to be on the bleeding edge of the idf and it, it's buggy there are features missing uh, there's some um, peripheral and driver issues there's lots of work still to do and the expressive team are, are working quite hard on it but this is really super early days. These are obviously not available yet to buy, I don't think. Uh, maybe the Soala, or however you say it, dev kits will be available sooner for people to play with. But again, it's IDF only, and it's a completely different tool chain to the normal ESP32. So if you currently use the IDF for your ESP32s, you need to do a lot of wrangling to be able to then talk to the S2 and back again. You can't talk to them both with the same tool chain. So yeah, a lot of, a lot of stuff still happen. But um. This is uh, really exciting. I'm looking forward to getting some ESP32 S boards up. And I can't wait till the first time I get to boot MicroPython on my Pro S2. It's going to be nuts. And as a quick hint, my Pro S2 board is nuts because it is a completely reimagined board from what I've shown off on my channel so far. It's got all the same features plus more, and it's different. And it is insane. And I damn well hope it works. Okay, thank you all for watching. If you're new here, please subscribe. Subscribing makes a huge difference to my channel. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and click the alarm bell to be notified when I have more info about this and maybe some more examples to show off. To my patrons, thank you so much. I really appreciate all of your generosity. You guys are amazing. I hope everyone stays safe and I will speak to you all later. Bye.